uh, my dad at home with me in my life, who my father was a father to all my friends who did not have fathers. So I grew up in a neighborhood having the only father. Y'all don't think that was hard. Huh? <laughs> I, I had the only dad. That's true, my dad. But Ted, some other names, Latif, Ted, you know, uh, Dan, uh, Terry, all that. That's true, my dad, everybody. There you go. I, I shit my dad. So I, I was, I had to shit my dad. Everybody come in. My dad come out of his pocket. He gave me a dollar. He gave everybody else a dollar. That's four dollars I could have had. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's for he come in. Hey, dad, dad, can I get a dollar? He go in his pocket, give me a dollar, get ten dollars, get a TV dollar, get. I'm like, wait a minute. That's four dollars. That could have been mine. But I shared that. But that was my dad. My dad. And I had to share my dad. I can say that. It's because of the opportunities that we had. And Tone and me having that then became that pillar of reason in what I had and, and what needed to be reinforced. So as he played that, that, that fatherly role, it was that big brother, it was that mentor, it was that coach, it was that, hey, this ain't how it's supposed to go. So you got to understand, you know, you got one. Rest of these boys, I'm out here trying to help too, but you, they ain't got one. So I expect more from you. Right? So he threw that ownership back on me. And Tony is the owner of Athletes Fitness Inc. Um, his journey began um, as an adolescent growing up in the Hill District uh, community um, to about 12 years old. Then he grew, uh, moved to Homewood. As a graduate of West Hills High School in 1979, he went on to attend Duquesne University. Uh, where, uh, where he was a two-sport athlete. Um, he started coaching us right around that time. And I remember he bought his first big Cadillac. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's L.D. We thought we were right. And white interior. Was it nobody out there riding to hit the plastic guy, right? Listen, we said, oh, no, listen, don't get in here with this. We used to, listen, we used to wait for Tone. And this is because he wasn't, doing the wrong things. He was doing the right things. So we was those kids at practice that would show up early at the corner down from the field so when he turned the corner, we could all cheer and run up beside the car because we couldn't touch it. <laughs> wasn't allowed in <laughs> right? But we were all watch turn. We were all watching turn the corner in the LD. <laughs> and we start running the field. They're going to come and tell I mean, But those are those memories that, 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 that you have. And, and knowing that, and now, him also being a father, was a father then. His, his, his daughter and nephews are here. Um, his son and my son are the best of friends with Ted as well. Um, so he, he, he's continuing that fatherhood thing happening. Um, and then after he went to Duquesne, um, he was blessed uh, 30 years working with kids. Uh, like I said, he, I'm a product of his environment. Um, also, uh, he wrote a book um, called The Resurgence of Wilkinsburg Football, 1986-1989, which um, all you guys will get a copy of um, here today uh, on Small Seasons Down. So we wanted to make sure that we help support uh, and, and, and promote that as well as uh, Jim Earl has donated some books for us as well. So we want to um, support everybody here too. And uh, last but not least though, um, he is a husband and father as I talked about, two boys, one girl. Uh, but his focus in his body of work includes the creation of a healthy, spiritual, low stress environment that is embedded in the, uh, I'm sorry, the serenity of acceptance. Serenity of acceptance, courage, Discipline and change. His motto is that you can be whatever you want to be in life if you are willing to make the total commitment to excellence in every aspect of your life. So with that, um, I'm going to introduce a great friend of mine, mentor, coach, partner, whatever you want to call it, um, Mr. Tony Mitchell.
30 years. When I met Keno, he was probably nine years old. Keno was a, a gifted athlete, but Keno was rough around the edges. Keno would tend to drift into situations that caused uh, some problems. And in the community that they were in, in Homewood, there was a lot of drugs, a lot of gangs, a lot of violence, and it was my job to kind of steer these guys in the right direction. When I look at Keno and Theo, at this point, I'm so proud of those guys because I know what they went through. They used to be you guys back in the day. Athletic kids. You know, kids, that were social. kids that everybody looked up to. You know, kids that had great personality, great discipline. Theo lived in Homewood, but he went to school at Shenley. So that created a totally different dynamic because all his friends were in Homewood, but he went to Shenley. So he used to take grief on a day-to-day -day basis about being a Shenley guy. But the thing that I, I loved the most about Theo was he had broad shoulders, and it never brought him down. This dude was athletic, he was tough, he was a leader, he went on the IUP, got his bachelor's, got his master's, he got two sons that he's bringing up extremely well. I'm proud of you, man. You know, keep doing your thing. Keno Fitzpatrick was probably the most gifted athlete that I personally coached. Keno could play basketball, football, baseball. Keno used to come with me when I was 28 years old and play flag, adult flag football because he was like that good. You know, I can remember uh, we played uh, for a state trooper team and uh, Keno was 17 years old and I kept telling him, don't kick the ball to him, it's going to be trouble. And of course, him being 17 years old and these grown men being out there, man, we'll kick the ball to him, he ain't going to do nothing. He took that thing back about 80 yards for a touchdown. And it was at that point where I realized that these guys were not only good athletes, they were tremendous leaders. Keno has his bachelor's degree. He has his master's degree. Now he's on his way to getting his doctorate. So when you talk about a mindset, a championship mindset, it started with those guys. They had to make a choice between what they were going to do with their lives and what was going on in their communities. Life is like a blank canvas. And we talked about this a lot when these guys were young. Everybody gets their own canvas. It's not a joint thing. You get your own canvas. You get your own paintbrushes. So now you get a chance to paint your masterpiece. Can't nobody set goals for you. You gotta set your goals for yourself. You got to have dreams, you gotta have hopes, and you go after those things. We talked about that on a day-to-day -day basis. Your mindset is who you are. When you get that blank canvas and you don't pick up your paintbrushes, how are you gonna paint your masterpiece? Somebody else is gonna pick up those paintbrushes for you and tell you you need to sell drugs. You need to hustle. Don't go to school, don't do your homework, hang out with us. That's why you have to focus on your canvas. When I talk about life, I'm talking about life in serenity. Serenity means that there are things that you are powerless against. There are things you can't change. You can't change the fact that you're black. You can't change the fact that you may have grown up in a low social economic area. You can't change that. But what you can change is how you accept your education, how passionate you are about your education, the choices of the people that you want to hang around. You can change all that. But you got to have the courage to stand up to people and say, no, I'm not selling them drugs. I'm going to school with my book bag, trying to get the highest grade point average I can get so that I can go to college. You're not going to be eligible to go to college just based on your athletic ability. And I look up here and I see my man Nate Brown. Nate was playing that period when I was coaching at Wolfsburg, 1999. I was just telling Nate out there in the hallway. Nate was a beast. And we always tried to think about ways that we could block Nate because Nate was like six foot, probably in middle school. <laughs> and Nate used to wear the big old neck roll and just was, he was a straight beast. I'm proud of this dude. He got his own kids. He's raising these kids to be men. 
And the thing that I see in a lot of you guys are the same things I saw in these guys. But you've got to develop that championship mindset. That mindset that says, I'm going to be different than everybody else. I'm not going to be a follower. I'm going to be a leader. We talked about that on a day-to-day -day basis. You have to be a leader. The most fertile grounds that there are, fellas, in the world, in every city, are cemeteries. And we talked about that all the time. You know why? Because people take their hopes, they take their dreams, they take their goals with them when they die. Without telling anybody what their hopes were, what their dreams were. So that makes that ground just fertile. If you got hopes and you got dreams, paint them on that canvas. Let everybody see what your goals are. You want to go to college? Put that on that canvas. You want to own your own business? Put that on that canvas. Why? Because every day when you look at that canvas, it reminds you that's your blueprint. That's your blueprint in life. But if you don't have goals, and you don't have dreams, and you don't put a value on your life, you end up dying before anybody even knows who you are. You have no legacy. You have nothing. <coughs> So it's important that you guys understand that when your fathers are talking to you, they're talking to you because they know. They understand. Don't fight them. Listen to what they're trying to tell you. My business at Athletes Fitness Inc., I do with athletes all day long. Male, female, black, white, Chinese, Indian, it don't matter. I deal with athletes. I motivate athletes. Spiritually, physically. My thing is this. If you're willing to make sacrifices, then I can make you better. Our motto is winners trained here at Athletes Fit the Same. If you want to be a winner, then you need to hire me. You got to have confidence. You got to have a little bit of that swag. When I go in and I bid on jobs, if I'm going to Mount Lebanon, I know I'm behind just walking in the door because of what I look like. There's all these trainers that want to train the football team at Mount Lebanon. They want to train the lacrosse team. They want to train the soccer team. So I come in with my presentation. I'm sitting there in the lobby. And I'm looking at these other dudes like, I don't even know where y'all showed up. This is my job. I'm getting this. You got to have that type of confidence. You got to have that type of mindset to do what I do. I've been everywhere, gentlemen. I've trained middle school athletes. I've trained high school athletes. I've trained professional athletes. Guys that started out when they were your age. When they had dreams. When they took their paintbrushes and they started painting on their own canvas. And every year, we set new goals. When I remember this guy right here playing quarterback for the first time, this dude was throwing a javelin. He didn't even really know how to throw the javelin but was the best javelin thrower on the track team. This guy could throw the football 70 yards flat-footed. He ended up going to college playing tight end. I remember when you guys played the national championship game. And I remember your journey from when it started. And I was proud because I knew the sacrifices that you made. When I think about athletes, I think about sacrifice. When I think about fathers, I think about sacrifice. My dad's not here today. It's his birthday. He was going to come, but he got sick. My dad's 79 years old. And one of the things that my dad used to always say to us, my brother's here, he used to always say, you got two things in life. You either got chicken shit or you got chicken salad. Once you determine what that is, if it's chicken shit, it's going to stay the same. You can put some seasoning on it, some pepper, some hot sauce, some dressing, but it's still going to be chicken chip. Or you can have chicken salad. That's what everybody wants. Everybody wants that chicken salad. You guys got to decide what you going to be. You going to be chicken chip or you going to be chicken salad. That's your choice. Nobody can make that choice for you. Now, I'm looking at Theo, I'm looking at Nate, I'm looking at Keno, who dudes the chicken salad. The best kind. Because that's what they chose. The question is, what you guys want to choose? I got a chance to
to be a head football coach, to be a head track coach, to coach basketball, to coach baseball at the high school level. And I was always passionate about preparation. Preparation means you're lifting your weights when you're supposed to be lifting your weights. You're studying when you're supposed to be studying. You know your role within that game plan, whatever that might be. I was always fascinated with that as a head coach. So it led me into becoming what I am, which is a competitive edge trainer. Competitive edge means anything that you need to be better than your competition. It might mean running faster, jumping higher, being stronger mentally. Whatever it takes, that's what we do. Apply metrics, strength training. Whatever it takes, that's what we do. People told me when I was growing up, you ain't gonna own your own business. Nobody owns their own business. Not around here. And I'm looking at folks, and I know my brother and my uncle all attest to this. I was never one to listen to somebody giving me my goals. No, I'm setting my own goals. Keno talked about the red Cadillac. Okay, I'm 23 years old. I'm coaching Pony League at home. All other coaches got beat up forwards. I wasn't going to be the guy with the beat up forwards. I was going to give me a nice Cadillac. Because when we showed up at our games, I wanted folks to know that it was on. When that red Cadillac showed up, it was on with the nice white leather interior. So you got to be the type of person that when you come in to a room, you make a statement by your presence in that room. Not because you're a loud mouth, not because you're bragging, because you got that sweat. When you walk in, folks are like, yo, who's that, man? You ain't said a word, but your presence is in that room. That's what you guys got to choose to be. It's all about your mindset. It's all about what you want to be in life. Championship mindset is the ability to overcome your fears. Everybody got fears, man. I deal with professional athletes who have million dollar contracts and they got fears. Maybe I won't catch the ball. Maybe I'm gonna get hit when I catch the ball. Maybe that curveball that this pitcher has is too much for me. I'm a sprinter. I don't know if I can beat this dude. This dude got three, four gold medals. Everybody has fears. I don't care who you are. Male, female, everybody got fears. So you gotta have the ability to overcome those fears during competition and in life. Because when you have that kind of mindset, you're unstoppable. I don't care what the sport is you're playing, you're unstoppable. You become a force. So we deal with championship mindset and still. When I go to Mount Lebanon and people look at me and the first thing they think is, well, how's this black dude going to train these guys who come from million dollar homes he grew up in the hood. Education is that neutralizing factor. When I look at Nate, I look at Theo, I look at Kino, and the thing that I know is those guys are educated. I'm educated. There's no way I'm taking the back seat to anybody. I don't care who it is. I can read, I can write, I can do math. <clears throat> That's why it's important that you guys take your education serious. It neutralizes everything. Everything. I don't care where you go. If you're not educated, you can't learn at the same pace as someone who is educated. It's that simple. So when your friends are telling you, don't take your book bag home. Don't do your homework. Come chill with us. You got to be smart enough and strong enough to say, look, man, my goals are to go to college full ride. I don't want no loans. I don't want my parents to have to pay for anything. So I need to take my book bag home. I don't know about you, but I need to take my book bag home with me. Don't fall to the pressure that's in your community that says, you ain't supposed to be a good student. You're supposed to know every rap song. You're supposed to be wearing Gucci belts. You're supposed to have the latest Android phone. All that stuff is a smoke screen, fellas. It's a smoke screen. They didn't have social media, but there were other smoke screens. The Jordans, when they were growing up. All the hustlers in the hood wore Jordans. 
matching sweatsuits, big old gold chains with crosses on them. You got to be smart enough not to take that bait. If I tell you, Kino, that if you get your education, that you're going to make maybe $600,000 a month. If you get your education and you're willing to make sacrifices, and you're willing to work out when everybody else is drinking and smoking weed. If I tell you that, are you going to take that opportunity, Kino? Yes, sir. Mike Tomlin, $600,000 a month. Not a year. A month. His education was important to him. Oh, yeah, he played football. But his education is why he is what he is and where he is. Never forget that. When you're going to school, stay focused. Keep your mindset where it's supposed to be. That's the only way you're going to reach your goal. There's a kid who just got drafted by the Reds there. A white kid from Mount Lebanon. His name is Troy Apke. We did the training over at Mount Lebanon. And I noticed something in Troy from the very beginning. Troy was a sophomore. Troy was athletic. Troy was fast. But Troy didn't have no confidence. And Troy was just a raw athlete. I said, man, listen, let me teach you how to run track, and you can play some football. This speed is going to be your ticket to the next level. Troy Apke never ran track before, started training with me as a sophomore, went into his junior year. They're running at the Whitfield Championships, and Phil, you remember Monte, Monte Nicholson from Gateway. Monte plays for the Redskins, the safety. Monte was the odds on favor to win the gold medal. But Monte didn't have me. So his blocks weren't real good. His starting blocks just weren't real good. So I told Troy, we're going to continue to work on blocks. So when you come out and your drive phase is what it should be, you're going to beat Monte. Troy's looking at me like I was smoking crack cocaine. He said, man, ain't no way I can be Monte. Monte's six foot, two, 205 pounds ripped. Troy's probably about six one, lanky, maybe buck 80. But Troy had blocks, techniques, fundamentals. We go over the ball, and everybody's looking at the start of the race, and everybody's getting their money out. It's Monte. I give you 100 as Monte. I'm just sitting there, and I'm listening. Because I understand, I already didn't scout Monte. I know Monte personally. But he never really worked on blocks. Like Troy worked on blocks. So here we go. The gun goes up. It goes off. They come out of the starting blocks within 20 meters. It was over. Yeah, the white boy won. Because his blocks were better than Monte's. So as fate would have it, Troy is up going to Penn State on a scholarship, football scholarship. Monte goes to Michigan State on a football scholarship. So they're in the Big Ten Conference. So they're giving it to each other. So Troy got bragging rights because he's like, dude, I got the gold medal. Monte's like, but I'm going to NFL. Troy says, so I'm not. He's like, man, ain't no white boys playing DB in the NFL, man. So Troy's thing is, I'm going to just keep working. I'm going to keep training. So as fate would have it, Monte is drafted by the Redskins. A couple years later, which was last spring, Troy goes to the NFL Combine. And I already knew Troy was going to like the Combine. Because he trained, he worked hard. This dude goes out and runs a 4 3 at the Combine. Deion Sanders. On TV, being primetime, said, right in the middle, whoa, who was that? He was like, that, that dude can run. I mean, he can run, run. And they were like, why are you all excited about that? I can't say it on TV, Dion said. Y'all know why I'm excited. He was like, why? Because he's a white guy? Yeah, man. I mean, Troy came off the track. Dion said, come here, man. Let me give you a hug, man. You can run. Fate would have it. 
Monte and Troy are now Redskins together. So never ever discount what you can be just because you come from another neighborhood where you might not have that natural ability. Troy Aki is a Redskin. Monte Nicholson is a Redskin. Focus on you, your mindset, what you know you can be, and work hard on your blank canvas. Get your paint brushes out every single day and paint on your canvas. Understand that those are your dreams, your goals, and the only way you get there is to stay focused. I had the opportunity to do a documentary, and it's called Championship Mindset. And it was based on my time as a head football coach at Wilkinsburg. I got a clip that I need to show you guys. These guys were street guys when I got there. I lived in Wilkinsburg. Nathan attested this. He knows a lot of these guys. These guys were caught in between being gang members, being football players, and being just cool guys. When I got there, it was an auditorium just like this. My daughter can attest to this. She's sitting back there. She was a freshman at Wilkinsburg when I got the job. And I said, okay, we got G-Town Fugs over here, we got the Crips over here, we got... I mean, everybody sit in the set that they claim, gang-wise. And I said, okay, now everybody can leave the auditorium because the only gang in the school right now is the football team. And that's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, now you tricked us. We just want to be on that gang, the football team. I said, okay, if we want to make that commitment, then we're putting down all that other stuff. We ain't killing each other no more. We ain't robbing each other no more. We come to work as one, the Wilkinsburg Tiger football team. We went from 0-24 to winning our conference in two years. Why? Because they were focused on working hard, on doing the things that made them champions. Not just in football. I challenge these dudes in life. Don't come to my practice smelling like weed. Don't come to my practice smelling like you was drinking the night before. Why? Because that's going to lead you down a path of destruction. So this clip, I want you guys to pay very close attention to this eight-minute clip. Listen to the way these guys talk to each other. There's love, man. There's love. When Keno and Theo talk to each other when they were kids and even now, to this day, there's love, there's respect. Listen to the way they talk to each other. We got to get back to that. We can't keep killing each other, fellas, for no reason. We can't be having beef. There's no real beef. We got to respect each other. We got to love each other because we all in that same struggle together. Period. So when you look at this clip, Listen to these guys. Understand that they was over 24. They was the laughing stock of the WPIA when I took the job. I never forget going to my first coaches meeting and all the other coaches was laughing at me. Man, that's the new coach of Wilkinsburg. They don't want a game for five years. Them dudes is all game bangers. They don't lift no weights. I'm looking at these dudes like, I just don't know, do you? I'm committed to excellence. I'm committed to bringing out the best of these dudes. I'm going to see each and every one of y'all on the football field at some point. And y'all going to get that work. These dudes are looking at me like, it ain't happening. Okay. We go from 0 to 24, 2 and 8 my first year, 7 and 2 my third year, with a bunch of guys who was supposed to be thugs, gangbangers. You can be anything you want to be, man, if you're willing to make the sacrifices necessary. Put down your cell phone, pick up your book. Put down your controller for your game and do your homework. Why? Because that's the only way Troy got drafted. That's the only way Monte got drafted. This program with me. And one of the things.
things that I'm proud of is she's been on this journey with me for 35 years. Uh, Theo can attest to this. When I got the job in Homewood, I was 23, Theo was 14. She was three years old. She was in a dugout with me in a little umbrella stroller. <laughs> she was like my assistant coach. And now she's a graduate of IEP. She has her master's and she's a teacher in Atlanta, Georgia. Don't ever let somebody tell you guys that you can't be what you want to be. Championship mindset, it belongs to each one of you guys individually. You gotta be willing to get up in the morning and go do your running. You gotta come back. You gotta do your homework. Then you gotta lift weights. Then you gotta do your chores around the house before you get a chance to do the things that you might wanna do. Like hang out with your friends. If you're not willing to do those things in that order, you're not gonna be successful. I've been training athletes for about 30 years. And no athlete has ever made it from where you guys are sitting to the NFL or the NBA without making those sacrifices. Everybody, pay attention. Make your sacrifices. Stay committed to excellence. And you guys will have championship mindset too. Thank you for having me.